let's dominate the world with elegant tea time. <laughs> I know, I know when she's a pain in the ass, like when she's very pedantic. Nothing of that is written down. I'm happy to sacrifice those little things. Maybe hearing it from someone like Mark may give them that just slight push to grow their business bigger than what it is now. problem with the narrative around businesses and the way we talk about them. We're always talking about the extremes. You either hear about those at the height of success or those at their lowest. We either hear about the apples or Atlassians, the real success story so-called, or those down and out who just can't make it at all. Now they're all important stories, I get it, but the more interesting ones for me are those of the everyday businesses around this nation. Those that sit in the middle, in the mean. There's hundreds of thousands of these business owners out there who've done well for themselves, but never get talked about. They build up something they're very proud of, but they just aren't reaching their potential. Now I've been in business for a long time. I've seen recessions, natural disasters, raw commissions, and now, of course, pandemics. I know Australian business can survive whatever is thrown at them. I know they can make it through all uncertainties. They can always survive. But to thrive, to go to that next level, to reach their potential, sometimes they just need a little bit of guidance. It's good to keep doing what works. Don't change that. But sometimes it's important to make additions to what you do, to reach your potential with some guidance. And that's what Survive and Thrive is all about. It's about showcasing the stories of Australian entrepreneurs and trying to help them figure out for themselves what's their barrier to going to the next level and what's going to get them there. So my name is Zena and I'm the co-owner of Elegant Tea Time with my husband Ahmed. <laughs> We've had elegant tea time for about 10 years nearly now. I was studying at the same time I was, I was working for a logistics company. I'm actually an accountant and so I was always working in the government sector and I had an amazing job, I had a good corporate, you know, high position at the time. But elegant tea time came by accident during the time when I was the first time I've ever been home and that was on maternity leave with my son. And then she wanted to do a party when he was born and she bought some stuff. And then after a couple of months, but she couldn't sell it and she and people like, would you hire it out? Especially in Sydney at the time, we didn't really have this market of props. Sydney has a market of big event decor space like marquees, chairs and tables. But there was nothing in terms of the small, nice decoration items. And then from there she goes to me, look, you know, like people want to hire this stuff. At that time I just took it as a joke. I'm like, who wants to hire this? Well, you know what, I'm going to put it up on Gumtree and while I'm sitting home, I'll just keep hiring him out and make some extra cash. But then at some point we just realised, hey, you know what, we can actually do this. And that's where the idea took off. It just grew from there. So Zena saw an opportunity. She saw a gap in the market and she took a chance. I really dig that. When you've got an idea like Zena has and you see some potential for it, you can bet your bottom dollar that there's someone else out there thinking exactly the same thing. So you've got to lock it down, act on it. Now that's a defensive play. So where the hell do you go to do that? What do you do to secure that idea and bring it to life? When you're getting started, the important thing is to use a service that you can trust, one that cuts through all the BS, but has the tools to help you grow with your idea. For aspiring Aussie entrepreneurs, there's no one better for that than GoDaddy as far as I'm concerned. So you've got an idea and you see the opportunity. You don't need me to tell you that it takes hard work to build on that and create a business that can survive. Zena and Ahmed have put in that hard work over eight years and they build a solid business. But what if they want to get to the next level? They need to invite some honest and unbiased feedback. Hearing things from your partners, staff, Customers, yep, customers can help you change bad habits, reveal blind spots, give business owners the revelation they need, or make a realization that they may not otherwise have ever had. And that's what takes you to the next level. So my name's Anne. I worked with Zena in Elegant Tea Time for over two years now. For me, I've always been quite uh, picky with my bosses and I've never actually stuck around for a job for even a year and like now I'm here for like two and a half years really says something about them as bosses. Zena is the one who's really been like teaching me pretty much everything has been going through Zena. Ahmed's there 
doing like kind of the behind the scenes back stuff in the warehouse. So when you meet Ahmed, you'll see he's quite the opposite of me. I'm very outspoken, confident in everything I do. He's quite shy, he keeps to himself. <laughs> She's very bossy. She can be like probably like sometimes very annoying, just like she's very demanding, like a normal wife. Sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes I'd go off at each other for like over something so silly, like you know, a wrong size table, for an example. But then they just laugh it off at the end because it gets done. When we go back home, you know, we're not sick of each other. Uh, we're usually, you know, back to normal home life, kids and everything else. You know, seeing her over the years grow the business. It makes me happy to see like, well, like a business can go from, you know, zero to a hundred. She is like my friend, my mentor. She's everything like a teacher. You know, she sees what I do, my efforts, my work, and that's something that it's hard to find in a boss. One thing I really, really love in Ahmed is the full trust he has in me. He's always just trusted everything I do and has always given me that confidence to be able to do everything. And to find someone who tr puts so much trust and faith in you, mm -hmm. and I think not just in the business life, but even in our personal life, in terms of making decisions and all that, he'll always back me up. And that's huge for me, because I know I always have a solid rock behind me. I would love to franchise my business to a point where we are a brand that's worldwide. You know, there's an elegant tea time in Dubai. There's an elegant tea time in California. That's always been my goal and that's always what I've worked towards. Her business has potential to even become bigger than what it is. I was happy from day one, but that's just me. I, I don't, I'm not going to complain because at the end of the day, Look, it's, it gives us, it, it pays all the bills. We love think we're living a very comfortable, more than comfortable life, so I'm not gonna complain. What would be the reason they, sh they shut down? For real, if it was a family, if there was an issue with her family um, or herself, it would not be able to run without her. Like, she needs someone who can replace her in case of anything. You know, it might not even just be her who's in trouble, it could be her family member, and then what? Uh, but it does, it does rely on me a lot because a lot of the creative side comes from here. So that's, you can't delegate that. That's something that just comes to you naturally and you have to be a part of that. I think so much happens here. I find that sometimes a bit hard to delegate, which is what I'm working on at the moment, is learning how to delegate the different parts of the business. Those closest to Zena in a business have said what they think. But is she aware of what they're all saying? Does she realise what her blind spots are? Zena wants to franchise her business around the world. Does she understand what that's going to take? But sometimes you've got to be careful what you wish for. Now I've run businesses that operate in different parts of the world, and let me tell you something, it's not a simple thing just to jump into. Does Zena have systems, structures, and processes all set up in her business to allow for the expansion that she wants? Are Zena and her husband arm and aligned on the direction of their business? Do they both want that international growth? Are they aligned? So let's find out. So, Elegant Tea Time, mm -hmm. uh, we're an event for hire company. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been around for about hitting 10 years now. For the future, though, what would you say would be a good definition for success for your business? I think, in terms of growth, I would love to see it grow on a much bigger scale. Uh, so Elegant Tea Time, yes, we are well recognised, social media all over the world, people recognise our brand and what we create in that. But I would love for it to actually become a brand that is internationally available. Okay, so just to get it clear though, um, the way you would measure future success is to be an international brand beyond where you already are. Yeah. What does that mean though? Like the dream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think dream, the dream, vision. The vision for me would be to have a franchises all over the world. You know, there's an elegant tea time in Dubai. Yeah. To be at a point where, for example, someone contacts us, yeah, your local office, they, you know, yep. the closest is Dubai. Yep. They can supply you and they can provide you. Our, our next franchise is here, our next franchise, where it does become an actual, we have locations all over the world. These guys have got a following, a good following. They've got a dream. That's fantastic. But they need to realize the level of work and the level of sacrifice that it's gonna take to achieve that international growth that Zena is chasing. Let's show them what people around them think. 
I think I play a huge part in my business, as we all do. I'm a bit of a control freak, so it's very hard for me to sometimes let go. Well, something she could really um, work on is a system um, for her business. So it's everything pretty much from what I've seen, it just runs from their minds. Okay, so one of your key employees, but um, and by the way, your employees will give you both a big rap because right? they love working for oh. you. And what Andrew said then was that um, our business probably doesn't need the system, but it would be good if we had one. But if you're a franchisor, yeah. it's it's a non-negotiable, yeah. and it not only has has to be a system, but it has to be a refined system. Then it has to be reduced to writing, and that becomes your intellectual property mm. because that's what you're selling. You're selling the brand name. And so you need to be working on the brand name all the time and building it up in terms of marketing, etc., continually around the world, globally, or just pick one territory, like you, you may example Dubai. Um, then the person who becomes a head franchisor for that area, um, that person has to have everything in documentation, systemized, so that, um, and that's because that's what they pay for. And then they'll pay you a royalty for everything they do, they pay you a percentage. But in return, out of the money they pay you, some of that will go into marketing of the business brand in the area and then upgrading the systems. So I often talk about in my playbook about playing defensively and I say to everybody, um, the intellectual property of a business is not patents and copyrights and trademarks, I mean they're important, but every single business has intellectual property. Like for example, the way Ahmed might deliver 100 chairs, he has a little system in his brain he knows I've got to be there at six, five, because if I've got to be sat down the road, it's going to take me an hour to pack the truck. This is the size truck I need to get for 100 chairs. All of that needs to be written down. Everything that he does, not only what you do, yeah. everything that he does, everything that Anne does, yeah. all needs to be put into a manual and then condensed and reviewed and reviewed and reviewed until you get it down into be like a perfect document so that if, God forbid, something happened to you, or maybe even better, you just decide you want to take a holiday, you guys want to take a holiday, then the Dubai branch doesn't have to talk to you. It's all available, or it's all in there. I've seen many businesses struggle with something that's important, and it is this. They don't commit to writing their systems and processes. And if you don't commit that to writing, then you have nothing to refine down the track. In chapter two of my playbook, I talk about playing defensively. For me, defense wins games. There's no point having a great idea, great staff, and a really good understanding of your business purpose if you're not prepared to play defensively. Because if you don't play defensively, you risk throwing all that good stuff away. All it takes is for one thing to go wrong in your business, and if you're not prepared, you're gonna lose a lot. So one way to ensure that doesn't happen, that disaster doesn't happen, is to simply write down your everyday processes in your business and continually review and refine them you need to be in a position to do two things. Prepare and systemize every single aspect from the moment you walk in the room, the shop, turn the lights on, to the moment you walk out of the shop and every person within that business to run a good franchise, yeah. that's one. Two, you need to be a really good delegator, okay? You can't be what you referred to in one of the videos as a control freak, yeah. okay? You've got to learn to control the business, not control every aspect, yeah. particularly the creative, which is something you love doing, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got something valuable for your family, for the future. Let's not put it at risk, okay? Yeah. Let's eliminate the risk. And the funny thing is I come from a background where I did all that. Okay, totally. I did training manuals. I did, so, yeah, I so you know what to do. I was part of creating the systems, but I've just... I think I've been so involved in the running of the business, I haven't ever had that time to step back and go. That's that. what I think you do, you need to step yeah. back. Yeah. Have a look at what, where your risks are. Mm -hmm. So you have key person risk right now for both of you. You are key people to the business. Mm -hmm. If something happened to you, as Anne said, they would know where to start. You know, at the start of the business, when I first opened our first warehouse, I said to um, I said, if I wanted to work five days a week, I should have stayed at my corporate job. So we're only opening up three days a week. So our warehouse was only ever there and we only worked a three day week, you know, apart from the weekend, but admin and office and all that, I said it's only three days a week because I left my corporate job to have flexibility and have time for my kids. And so that was always my vision. I don't want the super long hours. Yes, sometimes you do them 100%, you gotta do them. But when it starts to become my life, 
I need to then remind Well, just think about this, like if you're franchised in two countries, what happens, uh, Dubai's six hours behind us. Mm. Um, so when you go to bed at midnight, and it's only 6 p.m. in Dubai, and they're getting ready for uh, something a in wedding. that evening, yeah. on a Saturday or something, and the thing doesn't start to 9 p.m. their time, which is 3 a.m. your time, yeah. You just remember that, okay? Yeah. Um, and then, by the way, if you've got another business in California, uh, I had it in India. I had an in India, New Zealand, Australia. So New Zealand opens up before Australia a couple of hours. India closes four or five hours after Australia. So my life was uh, you know, waking up at two o'clock in the morning and going to bed, to bed at uh, 11 o'clock at night. And I did it for years and years and years and years and years. And then when we were in India, every fourth week, I used to catch a plane to India and have to leave my kids here and I would go away for five days and I would be then trying to get back as fast as I can just so I can go to the school sport on Saturday because I didn't want to miss school sport. That has a toll on you as well over time. So worth thinking about. There's more discussions to be had yeah. <laughs> when you're ready, okay? But well done, you've got a good business. Thank you. I love the fact you've got both got dreams. I think it's wonderful that a couple can be so solid together. Yeah, it really is, and different people, different personalities. Yeah, we always say we're, we're very opposite. Two different, but it works. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, just it's fantastic, and so yeah. I, I appreciate you coming in. I, I, Thank I you really, so much. I really, I really love this opportunity. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. So excited. <laughs> she, she's she's like the biggest biggest fan. I it think was... I think I think she needed that. <laughs> I think it was just so good very and genuine, refreshing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to hear it from very someone with so much advice, experience yeah. and he's just brutally honest about, you know, what life and the sacrifices to achieve your goals and, you know, you have to be realistic with that. Like he doesn't want young people to go in the same footsteps, just following the ambition and their goals in life and forget bigger picture, which is family and the values and moral of life, you know what I mean? I, th I think it was a good advice that he gave, especially get all the systems written down, even though we know everything, we are the key components in the business. And I think that's where we've lacked, and I think that's, you know, he brought that up as a really good point, that we have to do that, no matter what direction we want to go, even if we want to just continue as we are, that needs to be done. That's something that shouldn't be a negotiable thing. I think, I think it's a very good advice that he gave us. <laughs> I totally dig the dream that Zena has to build a business. I really love our ambition. We need to have more of that in this country. Every business needs good systems though, good structures. You need to have alignment amongst the business owners and you need to all believe in the business and where it's going. But no matter how successful an entrepreneur you might be or you dream to be, a little help, a little reflection on some of your blind spots is always needed to help you not only survive, but indeed thrive.